Some breaking news right now at Andrew Yang's headquarters. Democratic candidate Andrew Yang is suspending his campaign tonight. Mr. Yang is suspending his campaign. Andrew Yang, Michael Bennett, and Deval Patrick have suspended their campaigns for the Democratic nomination. Yeah. Andrew Yang has dropped out of the race. Andrew Yang has dropped out of the U.S. Democratic presidential race. Andrew Yang has dropped out of the 2020 Democratic presidential race. His campaign just told us that he is dropping out tonight. Tonight, I am announcing I am suspending my campaign for president. I love you, too. Well, the first thing is to stay positive, because as Donnie's saying, this isn't going to last forever. And we're very lucky to have Andrew Yang. He's the founder, the inventor of this. You're creating these jobs. A graduate of Columbia Law School and Brown University. Thank you. Because there's something about what you do that comes to define you over a period of years. Nobody knows who Andrew Yang is. You know, he's not a politician. Right here at Gasworks Park tonight, the Andrew Yang said if elected, his first priority as president would be to implement $1,000 a month for every American adult. Complete underdog. And surprisingly, actually, he's doing really well. He's a serious person. He's smart. He cares. The Tesla CEO tweeted his support for the venture capitalist on Saturday. that we're headed down the wrong road as you see it. Yes. And you feel you can interrupt that. I can. My name is Fred Ramey, and today I did a ride along with Andrew Yang. Honestly, I am a staunch Republican and very, very conservative. And initially when I saw his uh, viewpoints, if you were to tell me his viewpoints, I, initially I would just be like, hey, no. But as he starts to explain why he believes the, the policies that he believes in, many of them make sense. This is like something that I've picked up from Dennis in part. So I'm with this trucker in Iowa. And he says to me, he says, like, I don't think that Democrats care about people like me. Uh, and he says that to me while I'm in his truck. And I'm just like, I can understand why he feels that way. Uh, we live in a society today of, of tribalism, red versus blue, nobody can get along. But one of the things that really opened my eyes uh, and I was able to hear him, he says, well, it's not about left or right, but forward. trustworthy as a person and he's concerned with people first and one of the things I really like about his overall personality as a person is he seeks to understand first and seeks to be understood second. There is a point at which Democratic Party used to be very very heavily aligned with working-class Americans. The savings from robot trucks are estimated to be 168 billion dollars a year. So I'm running for president in large part because I think we need to get in front of this set of problems. We have to say, look, if we're going to save $168 billion a year, maybe some of that should go to the truckers. The fact is that you, you, you're you actually worried about the little guy. You know, you're actually worried about the truck driver. You're actually worried about that, that man or lady answering the phone or the fast food worker. That no one ever is going to get up on any kind of a political platform and talk to them. I'm going to talk about it. And that, that says a lot about you. Um, and here you are sitting with me today, saying the stuff that you have said. I'll to, have to follow you, man. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I really will. I'm, not... uh, I'm willing to give him a shot. So we need to get with the program and figure out how to actually make this economy work for people. 
I just, I, I sit with my jaw open, I agree with you so strongly. Why is giving people $1,000 a month better than Sanders' plan to get and guarantee them a job? I am for the spirit of a federal jobs guarantee, but you have to look at how it would actually materialize in practice. What are the jobs? Who manages you? What if you don't like your job? What if you're not good at your job? Most Americans do not want to work for the federal government. And saying that that is the vision of the economy of the 21st century, to me, is not a vision that most Americans would embrace. To a federal jobs guarantee does not take into account the work of people like my wife, who's at home with our two boys, one of whom is autistic. Because the fact is, and you know this in Ohio, if you rely upon the federal government to target its resources, you wind up with failed retraining programs and jobs that no one wants. If we put the money into our hands, we can build a trickle-up economy. From our people, our families, and our communities up, it will enable us to do the kind of work that we want to do. Mr. Yang. I know what you're thinking, America. How am I still on the stage with them? Two young boys, Christopher and Damien. How many of you all are parents like us here in the room? So if you're a parent, you've had this thought, maybe you've been afraid to express it, and it is this, our kids are not all right. They're not all right because we're leaving them a future that is far darker than the lives that we have led. Now my first move was not to run for president of the United States because I am not insane. My first move was to, was to go to DC, talk to our leaders and say, technology is ripping us apart. Immigrants are being scapegoated, our kids are being left behind, and the American dream that my parents came here to find is dying before our eyes. They don't want to talk about an issue they don't think they have a solution for. I'm not running for president because I fantasized about being president. I'm running for president because, like many of you here in this room tonight, I'm a parent and a patriot, and I have seen the future that we're leaving for our kids, and it is not something I'm willing to accept. And a wealth tax makes a lot of sense in principle. The problem is that it's been tried in Germany, France, Denmark, Sweden, and all those countries ended up re-killing it because it had massive implementation problems and did not generate the revenue that they projected. If we can't learn from the failed experiences of other countries, what can we learn from? Instead, we should look at what Germany, France, and Denmark, and Sweden still have, which is a value-added tax. If we give the American people a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every robot truck mile, every Facebook ad, we can generate hundreds of billions of dollars and then put it into our hands because we know best how to use it. How many of you saw the headlines? How much did Amazon pay in taxes in 2018? And when Martin Luther King championed a guaranteed minimum income in the 60s, which is almost exactly like my freedom dividend, he didn't do it for any subset of Americans. He did it for all Americans. Here's how we pay for the freedom dividend. A new tax that falls on Amazon and the biggest winners from AI and new technologies. Economic growth and putting this money into our hands. That's better educated, healthier, mentally healthier, and more creative and productive. The way to do that is to join every other industrialized economy and have a value-added tax. With a value-added tax, the American public would receive a tiny slice of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every robot truck mile. By putting this money into our hands, we build a trickle-up economy from our people, our families, and our communities up. $12,000 a year per individual. So for the average family with two or three adults, it would be twenty-four dollars to $36,000 a year. It's going to be amazing and how many more people you're going to be able to touch. Not by just going out there battling people on Instagram. Your path is forward. You gotta be kind. You gotta be compassionate. You have to put humanity first. It's not money for nothing. You're an owner and shareholder of the richest country in the history of the world. This is capitalism where income doesn't start at zero. That I am the same as everybody else. Whether we're punching faces or punching clocks, we're putting in the work every day to improve ourselves and our communities, but still being left out to dry by the governments that back the corporations and big companies instead of the people. Our next president needs to be someone willing to invest in humanity at its core. We are the people and we need a government that supports the people. Human-centered capitalism. 
one of Andrew's three main platforms speaks directly to this. Um, so it's what I call human-centered capitalism, which hopefully will take the best of capitalism and use it to improve our lives. Yeah, Andrew, uh, I think you might be in the wrong profession because uh, you're making way too much sense. Stood up. I really thought that when Andrew Yang came out on stage at, at, at 10 o'clock at night, he brought in energy. And you could feel the energy in this room as well. And I just thought that uh, how he came out with his approach to answering questions, but God, he has changed. His personality has changed. Well, look at him there. He was not like that a yeah, year ago. Yeah. His personality is now popping. Yeah. No, I am the math guy, and it is clear tonight from the numbers that we are not going to win this race. I am not someone who wants to accept donations and support in a race that we will not win. And so tonight, I am announcing I am suspending my campaign for president. And I've always had the intention to stay in this race until the very end. Endings are hard in Hampshire, but this is not an ending. This is a beginning. We'll be back soon. In the meantime, though, thank you all. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.